Recording is in progress. Let's renew this signal from Zoom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to discuss about the Ascendant once again. Well, so many videos I have made on the Ascendant, but yet I see people, they do not use this one house, the Ascendant and the planet, of course, the Ascendant Lord. They are very important. Both of them are very important. Now you may say, oh, but I don't have a planet in the Ascendant. And my Ascendant Lord is not exalted. He's not debilitated. He's not in own sign. He's not in a friend's sign. He's in a bad dignity or either he's afflicted. But irrespective of where your Ascendant is, your Ascendant Lord is, or what your Ascendant is, whichever sign it is, or which planet is sitting there, or is it empty, irrespective of all this, the Ascendant always remains the most powerful house in the um, entire horoscope, all right? So therefore, it is very crucial that you learn how to study the Ascendant, okay? So I've made many videos on how to study the Ascendant, like five factors to judge the Ascendant. I'll put those videos here. Uh, at the end, you can watch them. But today, what I want to uh, focus on is that the Ascendant is a very crucial house because it uh, gives you how you, it tells you how you view this world. So, which means if a person has certain afflictions in the house, let's assume somebody has an afflicted Venus. So, that, for that afflicted Venus can mean many things according to uh, what's the situation of the ascendant. For example, if a person has an afflicted Venus, it can mean bo both the things. It can mean that the person can have suffering in uh, his uh, love relationships, or it can also mean that he or she ends up giving suffering to their spouse, right? Both the things it can mean. Now, many times I see people, they have a bad Venus, and then they're like, oh, will I suffer? But you might also give suffering to others. Do you realize this? Well, most of you do not. <laughs> And as usual, if you're new to the channel, then uh, please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, you'll find my website down in the description section below. And even if you have or you do not have an afflicted planet, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. So now, the ascendant, for example, if Venus is afflicted. Now, suppose you become a victim, all right, which means your uh, spouse uh, had cheated on you or uh, your spouse uh, did not want to stay with you and then he or she left you, whatever reason. Now, what do you do after that? Do you also go and uh, hurting other people? Or you learn lessons and you decide that I will, not, I will never do that which happened to me with somebody else, okay? So this is an example of one negative event happening or one negative uh, thing happening in your life which uh, changes your paradigm uh, sufficiently or uh, I, I would say which changes or which gives you a new paradigm. It, it's like a paradigm shift. Okay? So uh, now this same thing can be viewed differently by different people. So you may say that, oh yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, something bad happened. So then why should I not do it to others, right? There are many people who say, oh yeah, I didn't get that. So I will ensure that nobody else gets that, okay? So that, that you will know from the Ascendant. Why? Because the Ascendant tells you which direction your thought process moves. This also means that Ascendant is a very important factor when you are deciding how much, how, how will a person use the free will, okay? Because so many times I see people are flooding YouTube with these questions. So how much free will do I have? Uh, how much is predestined? Well, the question along with this question that how much free will do you have? We should also ask this question. What is the probability or how will I, how at all will I use my free will? Even if I have free will or even if I don't, how will I be using the free will, right? Will I use it in a good way or will I use it in a bad way? Because imagine you have uh, a very good chart. You have a good plan. You have planets in good dignity and you have a very powerful 10th house or a very powerful 11th house. Then what can happen is you might have a lot of money, a lot of name, fame, power, position, influence. But imagine if your ascendant is not good, then you might end up losing all this. You might end up wasting all, all these resources. You might end up gambling all this, right? So then 
uh, you got uh, these resources because of your good karma or whatever. I mean, your own karma, of course. But then if in this life, your ascendant is not good, then it, it can work the other way around also. If uh, you give something to your children or you got something from your parents, you can see that the inheritance which you got and maybe your brother or sister, they also got some inheritance, but they used it in a different way. Maybe you used it better or they used it better than you, okay? So the ascendant tells you where, where you are heading into because every house is a house from the ascendant. Do not forget that. So therefore, always check what is going on in the ascendant. The ascendant tells you how will you use your free will, okay? Very crucial because even if you have a difficult chart, but if you are uh, able to use your free will properly, which means you have bad things happening to you, but then you do not make uh, your life a mess out of it, right? Whatever mess it has to, uh, whatever, however messy your life has to become as, as a part of your karma that it will anyways become, you can't stop it. But the thing is, you can always make the best use of a bad bargain best use of a bad bargain. All right, this negative thing happened in my life. But then what do I do? How do I react to it? That's what is free will, right? So when you say, how do I react? So it actually means you're talking of the ascendant, as simple as that. So therefore, the better the ascendant, the better is uh, your capacity to use the free will in a proper way. And how do you strengthen the ascendant? There are many ways you can... Uh, do worship of the sun god that strengthens the ascendant because Surya is the Karaka for the ascendant. Uh, you can also fast and donate on th those days um, with, uh, of that planet which is representing your ascendant. So suppose uh, you are Aries Lagna, then you can do donations and you can also fast on Tuesdays okay? because Aries is ruled by Mars, for example. And I also have made this video on you know, how to strengthen your ascendant. So I will put these videos here uh, at the end. You can watch them. But the most important thing that you can do to strengthen your ascendant is, uh, of course, uh, to do spiritual practices. Why? Because Jupiter gets directional strength in the ascendant and Mercury also. So when you uh, read the scriptures, you associate with sadhus, you uh, read about uh, the great historic personalities mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, then you realize how at all should I be using my free will. Because even if I tell you, you have 90% free will, is it good or is it bad? People think, oh, destiny is bad. It's like fixed. Better is free will, right? But then I ask them a counter question. Even if you have free will, are you sure you will use it in the right way? Well, so in that case, sometimes the being uh, destiny being more powerful than free will is much better because then you anyways can screw it up sometimes. But suppose you have a lot of free will in the chart then you can screw it up big time. Then you lose everything, right? Whatever you earn, you lose. Whatever you have, it's just gone because of your own fault. So therefore, uh, associate with uh, spiritually elevated personalities. Listen to them. Hearing from them is very important because Jupiter represents the years. Okay? So if you can hear regularly from a sadhu or a great spiritually elevated personality, Daily, as the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nityam Bhagavat Seva, hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam every day without fail. Then what happens is you are very clear of where you should go in life and what you should be doing when there are certain circumstances that come inevitably in your life. For example, uh, when you have the chance to exploit somebody, to torture somebody, when you have the power, when you can, if you wish, do you do that? Or you know how to punish people according to uh, their uh, their uh, level of sin which they've committed. Or you just get an excuse, yeah, you have committed this sin, you know, now I will torture you, I'll send you to hell. So in Mahabharata, we have this classic example, uh, Duryodhan and Shakuni, Karna and Dushasan, all these four, these crooks, what they did was they somehow by cheating, they uh, defeated the Pandavas in the gambling match, all right? So then what did this cook do? They, they uh, called uh, they, this Dushasan, he went and dragged uh, Draupadi uh, with her hair. She was uh, uh, in her menstrual periods and she was wearing just one cloth in her body and her cloth was tainted with menstrual blood. Can you imagine uh, dragging a woman like this? 
it's just uh, unimaginable uh, but imagine uh, she was the queen of the entire world that time because uh, yudhishthira maharaj had done rajasuri again he was the undisputed uh, emperor of the entire world uh, but she was uh, dragged like this uh, by dushasan and then duryodhan he started beating his thighs he said oh you uh, you dasi you slave you just come and sit here in my uh, thighs okay and then bhima took a vow that yes i take a vow that i'll break your thighs and then duryodhan's best friend uh, karna he said you know oh, uh, you draupadi you have anyways had so many husbands you know if there's one more if there's one more husband what's your problem right so and then of course karna he uh, met uh, the justice at the end of the war on 17th day when he was slaughtered by arjuna very beautifully so now the thing is duryodhan and duryodhan shakuni karna they had a chance to exploit pandavas and dropadi and they exploited them very badly but in the same situation if yudhishthir maharaj was there you no know, where when once when jayadrath had abducted dropadi and Uh, Jayadrath was brought to Yudhishthira Maharaj, and then Yudhishthira Maharaj could have given mrityu dand, you no know, death penalty. He could have given that, right? But then he showed some compassion, and he said, "Okay, release him, and Dwapadi can give uh, him any punishment." Then Dwapadi, of course, said that uh, leave uh, some hairs uh, in his uh, in his head, and uh, as in Sanskrit, you say, "na choti." Okay. so so that he knows that i had five i have five husbands but still uh, he is uh, wanting to enjoy with me and take me away so leave five totes in his head like this not me had said <laughs> so then what happens is um, this is an example where you can actually punish somebody or you can torture and torment somebody but then you don't do right but then when it when it comes to the kauravas they were always very crooked they would punish people much more than what they deserve okay and the pandavas would always punish people less than what they deserve now of course at one level you can say that you should punish people accordingly not even more or even less but from a standpoint of compassion uh, <clears throat> if the person is uh, ready to reform then it is always good if you punish the person a uh, bit less than what they deserve okay of course if the person is committing that mistake again and again and again and again and then of course it doesn't make sense then then it's really stupid that you keep forgiving somebody again and again all right then you should punish that person very severely but that is not something how that's not something which uh, the pandavas did and uh, even then uh, they were not they were very good and they were very righteous but the but the kauravas uh, they they punish them very severely okay uh, much more than what they deserved actually okay including dropadi also so this is an example where uh, you have something but then you screw it up big time all right so therefore always strengthen your ascendant watch my other videos on the ascendant and uh, understand that this ascendant controls your free will because ascendant decides how you will react okay where you will go and of course depending on the chart and what is the ascendant lord doing where is the flow of the chart so it it, it is like uh, looking at the whole chart from the perspective of the ascendant okay so therefore look at the ascendant very uh, meticulously all right in detail what's going on all right just the ascendant and the ascendant lord okay thank you very much for your patience and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it uh, down below and videos on the ascendant i put here right what is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him and if you want a consultation from me my website is also down in the description section thank you very much